very unique, and usually very cool, sweet, awesome, groovy, great project. <laughs> I'm the bass player for the Hodierno Quartet, uh, and by bass I mean mostly upright bass, but a tiny bit of electric bass when, you know, when permissible. I'm Birimir, I'm a violinist in the Hodierno Quartet. Uh, I obtained my master degree in Konikli Conservatorium, where I actually met uh, with Cody, and uh, we were uh, really interested in playing contemporary music and then we came up with actually the, this uh, Hodierno Quartet idea and we made it happen. Uh, besides contemporary music, I'm also classically trained violinist, so I'm also performing a lot classical music uh, as soloist and also uh, in the orchestras. I am uh, Orestes Willeman. Um, I play the guitar for Hodierno Quartet. Um, I am a classically trained guitarist, I studied in Finland and uh, now I am uh, studying composition in the Royal Conservatory in The Hague. Mm -hmm. We met with uh, Cody last year, uh, he came to me with the idea of starting a string quartet but with a guitar and it sounded immediately extremely weird <laughs> to do such a proposal since guitar just doesn't mix with string instruments. <laughs> uh, so I thought why not, it would be really fun to try it. <laughs> So we have been playing now for about uh, a year. Oh, not even a full year. And our fourth member who is not here, <laughs> uh, our cellist, is uh, Alfin Aditya. He is from uh, Indonesia. We are very lucky to have him. He joined us uh, two months ago. And uh, we'll be having our first official concert with him tonight. Right? Yeah, yeah it's the first gig. <laughs> yes, so we're really excited about that. I mean, as a bass player, I was just kind of frustrated, like, we just don't have nearly as much chamber music. The instrumentation was inspired by, do you know the Goat Rodeo Sessions with Yo-Yo Ma and Edgar Meyer? These sort of bluegrass, hybrid bluegrass classical. Their instrumentation was violin, mandolin, cello, bass. And I wanted something that had a bit more of the Western classical feel, and so, okay, we just guitar instead of mandolin, but I'm sure... If it I can play it. the model. I believe it. I believe <laughs> it. Uh, yeah, so it's inspired by that. And originally, we were also interested in doing covers of string quartets. I think at the very first rehearsal, we had attempted a, a cover of Death and the Maiden, Schubert's Death and mm -hmm. the Maiden. Um, there, there are reasons we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> and so we're focusing on not just contemporary music, but with living composers because there's only so much repertoire that we have available to us. Mm -hmm. and, and beside that, I also, sorry if I, I no. interrupted, uh, it's different kind of pleasure to work with like composers, with them, when we are playing classical music or standard repertoire. Of course, we do not have this kind of chance, and with this kind of style and with this kind of... Uh, contemporary music uh, by uh, playing living composers things, we are having a chance to actually learn the music from the composer. For me, the fun things are their questions. You know, it's like, hey, c could you try this? Could you try this? And then it's like, oh yeah, let's make a bunch of noise, try a new technique or something. And you know, like this, sh this sharing of of information, that you know, uh, successful collaboration leading to ultimately to a very unique, and usually very cool, sweet, awesome, groovy, great project. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, it's just this search for something new. And so when working with the composers, it facilitates that process. With the composer there, we can hear exactly what they were thinking. And it's important for us also to 
spend as much time as possible with the composers during the process of the uh, of them composing the actual uh, piece. So we'll when we usually commission pieces, we will always provide workshops uh, that they can come and try out things. Yeah. And then we give a lot of emphasis as well in having a sufficient number of rehearsals um, because we feel that it's really important to get as close as possible to the concept that uh, each composer is trying to achieve with the piece. And we have an opportunity which is quite unique uh, to have the, the personal inside info coming in. Well, uh, the very first project we did last June, it was uh, with uh, people we knew personally. I think so it was it, the original plan was uh, six composers, but two of them were us. Ah, yeah, so that's we, true. Each, we each had pieces. That's true. And we asked for colleagues of ours that we've worked with quite a bit, mm -hmm. but also trying to think of diversity within our colleagues, and I think that worked. But then we also had a seventh piece added quite last minute, maybe uh, an hour before the concert, about, yeah. Yeah. about, yeah. <laughs> maybe less than an hour. So we played for the first time on stage. Yeah. Um, but it worked. It worked, yeah. I mean, the it intention... was very, very conceptual, so yeah. Yeah. the hardness was the execution. <laughs> before we had these commissions, there, there's one piece written specifically for this instrumentation by Helmut Wooding mm -hmm. called Locked In. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten to perform that yet. It's on the list for next year. Mm -hmm. um, so we have had to look into scores for open instrumentation, which there there's a sufficient amount of. The two pieces we play tonight are both scored for open instrumentation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the Awinger Black series specifies for rock band. Mm -hmm. Blue series is unofficially scored for jazz band, but it's pretty open. As the composer, I say, just Mm. be free with it um, yeah and also on the on this program that we've been preparing we're not doing it tonight but also workers union yeah. symphonic mm -hmm. movement for any group of loud sounding instruments and yes we're a string quartet but amplification is yeah. lovely with you you can be loud yeah a lot of more pieces as well, right? Oh, with yeah, we also played and the Terry Riley piece with the yeah. open instrumentation mm -hmm. and the Yuka Tiansu. Yuka Tiansu. Yeah. Yeah. And the Steinmetz. Yeah, the nice. Steinmetz. Yeah. Really fun theater piece. I didn't even get to play an instrument, but what these narration... It's kind of like a game show. Very cheeky game show. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, not only do we play our instruments, uh, speaking can be involved. One of the pieces on the debut concert was for laptops, like websites, live websites even. <laughs> Exactly. Um, Versatility. Because, uh, I, to be honest, it's also sometimes very hard to balance these instruments together. Two electrical instruments and two acoustic instruments. But besides this, we have also opportunity to achieve acoustic sound or mix it with electronic sound as long as we balance them. I mean, it's kind of different taste. It's a very full ensemble. Yeah. I mean, register-wise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have the soprano instrument and you have the two kind of tenor alto and the bass, so you can do a lot of things. And then uh, we, we had a piece in which Cody was playing the upright bass and I was playing the electric bass, so it can really easily get lower as well. Yeah. Have we had two pieces that are For similar? Mm, not no, really. not so far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been thinking about this question too, and I still don't have the best answer. I would describe my ears as being fairly open and interested in all sorts of sounds, whether it's a sound that you would experience in a traditional concert hall or a sound that I personally w would like to hear in a concert hall, but just by walking out in nature and like this has to be in here. It's 
yeah, collaborative and curious. Especially my uh, hearing is very, 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 very uh, related with my emotions at that time. Sometimes I would like to really focus on a like specific, very maybe silent sound, especially when I'm practicing or sometimes I'm maybe frustrated, angry or stressed out and I'm just going some rough sounds and looking for that kind of sounds. It's somehow very, very related with my emotions. Sometimes can it, they can be very focused on one specific tiny detail or sometimes they are just hearing the general like clusters. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's like it's 25% has been used. <laughs> There's plenty of room available still for more data.